Hey everyone, this is Johnny from Johnny Custom Glocks and I want to shoot a video today on things you can do with your gun to enhance uh, the trigger system, whether it's the combat carry that you got, uh, the uh, target range, or the competition trigger. I know they're all, they're all high-end, high-grade triggers, but they're, in order to get them to really, really run to their maximum, there's a lot of little tricks of the trade that you can do to your frame and to your slide to maximize efficiency. So, um, I'm going to get my face out of here and kind of bring you down to the table because I want you to be able to see more of what's going on here with the gun. And I'm going to take you over like this. Okay. Now the reason I picked this uh, Gen 4 is because as soon as I pop out the trigger, you can see right here on the bar there is sort of a rubbing friction point that it is dis that is uh, distinguished by those marks right there on the outside of the bar. And the reason we're getting those is because inside of the gun. There it, there it is right there, you can see it. There is a polymer outcropping that is right here. I'm really gonna bring that in so you can see it. That right there. And there's also three other corresponding ones. These three right here, you can see there's wear on those as well. I haven't really done anything to this gun yet because it's a brand new Gen 4. It's the, uh, you know, it's these new ones that they came out with the flat dark earth, the whole thing, the whole gun's that. Pretty cool. Um, but anyway, these three pieces of polymer need to be worked out a little bit. And when I say worked out, what I basically mean is you're going to take your Dremel, probably at about 15,000, and I'm going to use you know, one of my smaller Dremels like this that's felt. Uh, for this type of application, I really like to use this polish for some reason it's like that it's like flitz's green version <laughs> but it really does an awesome awesome job on uh on polymer especially the glock polymer uh some polymers it doesn't do the greatest job on for some reason man this polymer really really works well with this uh with this type of uh polish and so basically what i would do and i'm not going to go through it all right here but i would get this spinning and I would get it right in here and I would be taking these areas all these areas in here smooth not I mean smooth let me let me correct myself there the 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 theory is that if one if two if two surfaces are sliding off against one each other if one of them is slightly rounded there will be less drag and less friction so all I really want to do here is when I come up against these parts I'm just really trying to, I keep using the word smooth and I don't mean to say that, but I just kind of want to get them nice, I want them to feel smooth, but what I'm trying to say is I don't want you to smooth it out so there aren't any, because that's just as bad. If you take too much polymer off of there, then you're not going to have this bar sandwiched against there, which gives you, uh, you know, back tension against the, against the connector. So you know, too much is bad. <laughs> you really have to just uh, gingerly go about it. And so what you're trying to do is just put a round edge on either side and leave the, and you can also see the gun, the gun showing me where the, where the work needs done right there. Grab my pointer here. And it is right there, right there. And like I said, back in here where this is. And if I really get you up in there, you can see how there's rubbing even on where there isn't polymer, where there isn't those outcroppings. So this gun could definitely use some TLC in that area as far as the frame is concerned. Um, you know, not too many times have I ever seen inside, sometimes in here there's a glitch or something like that where the trigger is, um, you know, the air isn't cut away tight enough or something like that. Of course, always check your pins. I'll take care of the trigger. I mean, it doesn't matter if you did a 25 cent trigger job or whatever, it's fine. I'm just saying, to, uh, you know, of course, it's a Johnny Custom Glocks video, so I'm, you know, promoting my trigger that goes in the gun. <laughs> so basically, if you did get the trigger from me, 
you know it's spot on. I have done my, you know, I've taken care of my side of the street and, uh, you know, we really want to make sure we're getting it to maximize. So those are the kind of major things in the frame. And like I said, if you really take a look at it, the frame will guide you and kind of tell you where you need to work it. Okay. Uh, next is the slide. And everyone knows, I just wanted to say something, you know, this, this side of the transfer bar is what actually rubs up against the polymer. And that's why, you know, there was that video where the everyone, and I, I usually put Gen 4 bars in all my kits. And everyone's like, why do you do that? You know, because everyone saw that video about this dimple right here. And the reality is they have been using this in the big guns for the longest time. It's not anything new. Um, metal on metal is a lot sleeker than hitting three pieces of polymer right you know, that, that's that was the design of this whole thing so those three pieces of polymer right there and you can see this is a gen 4 gun so it's really not working that great <laughs> but basically what you have to remember is the gentleman that, that did that video he probably did have a very he probably had too much material here that doesn't mean that every single uh you know glock is going to need this shaved down or removed i've just found you know the gen 4 bars the actual uh you know this end of the cruciform here, the sear, is actually a little bit longer, which is why, uh, you know, the, the Gen 4s have a, you know, just a, at the end of the day, I can get a Gen 4 to respond a lot more, res have a lot more responsiveness than a Gen 3. I think the Gen 4 um, slide to frame finishes are, are superior to the Gen 3s. There's a lot of slop in the Gen 3s in some of the guns. The Gen 4s, you don't see that as much. But like I said, you know, just because you see a video doesn't mean uh, every single gun is going to be that way. Like I said, trust trust the proof of the pudding. When I open this up, and there's marks on and there's marks on here, uh, then I know it needs worked. If I am having an issue where I can feel this thing gravelly and sliding off there, then it needs work. So same thing with this, with the safety plunge, with the uh, firing channel. And you can, oh, that's wild. My channel came right out. See, so that needs to be addressed. This this should not just come out like that. Really shouldn't. So I have a tool for that actually. I spent the money to get the tool since I work so much on these guns. But uh, the main thing here is, you know, you always want to make sure that these that these cups are not seated where the where this the spring has a definite end to it, which is right I'm trying to find that for you. Okay, see the end of the spring right there? You do not want it to look like, and this is the best way to show you, is how we don't want it to look. If I could just find the split. <laughs> we don't want it to look like this. Back it out. Bring it in. Can you see now how it's offsetting the two cups? The end of that spring is right where the cups separate, where the two cups meet. That is going to cause a big headache for you in a lot of different ways. It, it really, it really is, you'd be scratching your head when you're like, my gun's doing such weird stuff. But and it usually can come from something like this. So you have to make sure these are seated right and the spring, is, the, the end of the spring is not on where those two cups, uh, you know, where those two cups come together. Sorry about the focus on this. Again, on the side here, you can see there's a little wear there. Uh, there's some videos that say just, just do that immediately. That's not a, that's not a good idea. If you just do it immediately, you're going to have a stri striker that rattles like hell in your gun. But as you can see right there, there's a little mark which means I want to pay a little bit of attention to it. Also, I think this is a worked striker of mine. No, it's not. Let me see if I can get real close up with this. That's a steady my hand. Okay, see the tooling lines on there? They're going around in a circle. And you can even see the marks right here that could cause... This is a major, major point of engagement. And I had a, a, a video where I was going to show you how to work on it, but I had some... Uh, veterans of mine tell me not to do it because people might be acting a fool so I decided not to do it but the reality is 
you really want to get this area as smooth as possible. Uh, even if you can get those tooling marks out, all it really takes is a thousand or two thousand grit sandpaper, and uh, and then just really hit it with this, you know, hit it with this Dremel tool, you know, with some flits or Mother's Magic or something like that, right here. And I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be marble, man. It's gonna be glass on glass. Another thing with this is the reason this is angled up like this is because I told you if, if one leading edge is actually has a little angle or bevel to it, it it, it glides easier. So when this so when the system, I'm trying to see if I can do it in an easier way. So as this, as this is running up here, as this is running up this up the channel here, with, and the seer grabs it again, it has a little bit of an angle, so it gets picked up. Also, this, if you really want to tighten your gun up at the end of the day, and you've got it to, you know, really dial it in, and you're going to take down those last few little uh, moments of travel. This is the area you want to take off right here and make this flat, but not too flat. I'm telling you, go two or three stone things at a time. Really, if you take it to about right there, right about there in Gen 3s. See, Gen 3s and Gen 4s are different. Gen 3s, Gen 4s really don't need it. The Gen 3s really could use a little bit of this, of this, taken off and you know of course you're just going to get a stone or whatever and you're going to go you know you're going to go across the top like this keeping it flat because that's going to cause your break because when this sear comes off it right here it's going to that's your major engagement right there The sear comes off, you just boom, right there. So, with the with the slide, you want to make sure that this channel is totally cleaned out. So you're going to use some Q-tips. You want to make sure everything's out of there. You can put the slightest, littlest bit of gun oil on the spring. Slightest little bit right on the actual uh, spring cups as well. Also, with uh, with the safety plunger, you're going to double check that and make sure that that port is free from any debris. So inside of here, you're going to go down in there and clean it all out. You know, you want to make sure there's not a bunch of carbon building up and stuff like that. You know, people that people that get a little bit more refined parts in their gun and then try to treat it like that bone stock lock. It's not going to work, folks. You know what I mean? That's the con everything is a compromise. Uh, you know that's why I don't have so many bells and whistles on the combat carry version because you know it, it's it's a different kind of animal there. You know you want this thing to go bang every time. I remember when I first got my like big four hundred dollar XDR derailleur on my mountain bike, and it was a total pain in the ass to tune in because it was so refined and I wasn't used to it. But then once I got that dang thing tuned in, oh my God, it just was, it was the most pleasant shifting experience ever, if any of you can relate. Um, also, just always check your striker bar for uh, mars and dings in this area where the shelves are. Every once in a while you'll see marks, especially with the strikers that are, that are lightened, that are moving faster. Um, they usually bang up against the uh, safety plunger a lot, and you can see those mars and you know, little dings and stuff taken out of your safety plunger. At that point, you need a new safety plunger. And like I said, uh, my system is designed really to... I like Glock. I mean, I think the Glock should be kept what it is. So um, uh, the system was designed around this striker. You're going to get your best bet with my systems with this striker. I'm not saying Jaegers and all those other things aren't going to be good. If you want to use them, you know, you know, have at it, but you know, just know I designed it around this system because it's a lot easier to keep consistent because that's the gun it's going in. Um, so those are the two major parts of the slide that you really, really want to take a look at. Also, you know, when you are, when you, when you do get the, the, when you get the gun put back together, 
like I said, there's that slide to frame fit. When you're testing your trigger, and I know everyone doesn't like magazines in a gun, but put the magazine in the gun, especially if you're taking material off of the striker. Have the magazine in the gun, because that is actually going to lift the rear. So look at that. See that right there, the tolerance? It's going to actually lift this up a little bit, and so therefore you'll be getting a false read if you don't have some kind of if you don't have some type of upward pressure coming up against there, right? That you know that's gonna that's gonna definitely definitely uh, change things up once you get that magazine in there. Not drastically, but just like I said, make sure you get it in there. Um, those are basically just a few things that I wanted to show everyone that they can do um, to the gun themselves. And like I said, just don't do it because someone said it or one video had said to do it, even if I said to do it, you're looking for the gun to show you where to work. And like I said, it will be absolutely 100% telltale. It'll show you exactly where the marks are so you know where to just smooth out the material and, and, uh, get it. and there's also like a couple different waxes you can use here that, that actually do a pretty good job. Um, and you can kind of look into those as well. But, uh, yeah, those are the major things. I've taken care of the trigger end of it. Now for you guys, it's uh it's basically a it's basically these couple things I showed you are really 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 going to make the difference. Um also, you know, I just want to say a word or two here about um you know, when you got when you guys get the <laughs> when you guys get the guns, um, and when you get the trigger, because I set the tolerances so tight for these competition triggers, um, and I am putting them in my donor guns and then going out and shooting them and they, and they work fine. Uh, I had a couple that were, had a, I had like one week where there were crazy reset issues with all the triggers that I sent out. And I'm just like, what the heck? And so it was just time for me to get a new Gen 3. And once I got another Gen 3 and I started recalibrating in this new gun, I haven't had a call since. But if you basically are having any type of reset issues... What you want to that 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 means that when the when the when the it's resets like this. This is your, basically your your reset, and it sits on the outside of this cruciform and goes snaps off of there. It's kind of hard to do with. I'm gonna just fake it. Like that's it. That noise right there. So what happens is because I'm trying to tune it so quick, this bar is actually resting. The beak of that bar is actually resting, you know, right about there. If it's resting down a little bit further, the gun will reset itself because the because just the violence of the shock of the of the of the shot, you know, boom, it'll do that. And so basically, what you have to do is you have to, you know, take the rear screw, the, the rear screw right here. and you're going to back it out. You're going to take it backwards, start at a half turn, then shoot the gun again, half turn, shoot the gun again, but you never will have to go more than a full turn. Um, that's basically the way it's done. And as you can see, the, the faces of these connectors are even worked. And this guy wants his Right there, you can see just how nice and shiny. Yeah, there we go. See how shiny that thing is. So basically, that is a very slick, purpose beveled and angled and rounded and all this other cool stuff that I do to it to get it to really react quickly coming off of this, coming off of that beak. So if you're not in, and it's a matter of, oh my, just a matter of microns that you could really get it to run. And, uh, you know, once you really get it in there, lock tight it again. Or like I said, I hate to say this, but because it sounds so whatever, but, uh, you know, super glue, super glue will not let this system move. It's funny. And then if you want to, if you want to open the system back up, you just uh, soak it in, um, what is it, fingernail polish remover, acetone. But most of them are calibrated the way you guys want them when you get them. If you buy them from the store, you, you might have to work with them a little bit to get them where you want them. Uh, but as you know, I spent a pretty good time talking on the phone to everyone that I sell triggers to uh, to try to get an idea of what they're doing and what they want. 
So that's just a few things. That was the only thing I wanted to address was the reset thing. You're just going to back it out a little bit and that will really, really, really take care of just about anything. You know, when it comes to reset, it'll clean it all up. So uh, thank you for watching. I know it's kind of lengthy as all of them are, but yeah, I get, I get into it. And uh, I'll have another video coming out here soon. And uh, it's going to be a surprise. So I'll talk to you soon. www.johnnyglocks.com And uh, like I said, the name has finally been chosen. It's Johnny Custom Glocks. And uh, that's where we're going to leave it. You take care.